We're going to start with the Green County Tech Eagles, Coach uh, Nathan Morgan. Uh, thank you guys for being here. If you don't mind, Coach, just first uh, just give us an opening statement. Uh, first, I want to thank you guys for having us again. Uh, the exposure is always good for our program and our kids. And uh, Looking forward to the season, uh, getting things started. Had a good pad camp today. Uh, so yeah, we're just ha we're happy to be here. And introduce who you brought with you today, Coach. Uh, to my right, got Coach uh, Derek Henson, O-line, D-line coach. To the left, we got Cato Batten, uh, Cody Miller, and our big man, uh, Jacob Sapp. And just kind of project going in from what you've seen over the summer. Um, first, let's talk about offense and how you feel the offense is flowing and what it may look like this uh, coming up in just the next few weeks. Yeah, I think for the most part that um, with another year of offseason uh, under our belt, the same system, same verbiage, things like that, that uh, we're getting a little bit more comfortable with what we're doing. So uh, execution and knowing where to be, how to get there, things like that are doing a little bit better. Uh, and as summers progress from spring ball, we've improved each time out. We'd uh, had some good things happen today that we're going to teach on film and get back at it again on Monday. So uh, overall, we're progressing like we need to. Uh, we just got to make sure we keep up with it. And then talk about the defensive side of the ball. How's that coming along? Uh, we switched from an odd front to a four front, uh, kind of a hybrid four three look. We'll move some things around and, and jump into some different looks. But uh, biggest thing there, uh, just like I heard at the, the beginning here, is you know we had our biggest fix needed to happen on ha happen on defense. We've got to be able to tackle better. We've got to be more physical. We've got to run to the ball. So we're trying to get more athletic on that side of the that side of the ball. And so you start things off kind of early with a great game from last year, a rematch with Westside in the big stadium this year. So uh, it's an exciting way for you and the players to kick off the season. Yeah, it was a shootout. I think it was 53 to 52. Um, we just were all over the place defensively. Offensively, we were, we were clicking pretty good, especially for the first game of the year. You always have some apprehension that execution might be waning a little bit, especially as the game went on. But we kept clicking. We just got to get better on defense. Now with the, us being at ASU on campus at 530, that's kind of that extra incentive for our guys. You know, you're going to third, fourth quarter, there's going to be other, the other team's fans rolling in at the same time, getting ready for the next game. So we're going to have a lot of folks there. And it's a chance for us to show how the program's progressing in the positive direction, both on the field, off the field, how we do things. And so I, I know we're all excited. We just got to make sure we take care of business between now and then. Well, if it's anything like that ball game last year, Coach, then uh, the folks that show up to uh, ASU are going to be in for a treat. Um, wanted to ask this, the quarterback position. Um, Storm Harris took over last year for an injured Cody Miller. What's that situation look like? We like the way he settled in towards the end of the season. Uh, we felt like he did some really good things against Batesville. Um, and so we, we pretty much have had him peg since the off season, pick a guy, put a lot of reps into him. We've got a young kid behind him who's coming up as a sophomore that played uh, all three of his years in junior high, seven through nine. So he's, he's got some time at the quarterback position. The, the biggest issue with, with Storm was, you know, he was kind of behind the eight ball last year. Kids never played quarterback before, but he was willing, stepped in, athletic enough, worked on his mechanics. We got him looking a lot better. And uh, we're, we're proud of his progress and how he's come. He had some good things today that we can build off of and uh, some things that we can go in and correct, as always. But uh, uh, he's our guy, and we're, we're happy right now. Who's going to be his top targets to throw to this year? I think he's got a couple. But we've got a guy that uh, has come back to play his senior year uh, that showed out a little bit today. So you know, maybe that's gone up a little bit. But we definitely are going to lean heavy on Shad Vaughn in the slot. Uh, Blaze Randleman, a senior out there on the edge, and the, the new guy that kind of showed out a little bit today was Fisher Wood. Tell us a little bit about the new guy. Uh, Fisher has been, uh, he played a sophomore year, uh, stepped away from the game for a little bit last year, wanted to concentrate on baseball, talked to him a little bit. We knew he missed it, but you know how it is. You know, we got to coach the ones who are there. Um, the program, to me, in my opinion, is going in a direction where uh, football has become fun. It's become a place where they want to be. And we got a lot of folks that want to come out and be a part of that, whether they're playing or not. Um, when that happens, you just don't know where somebody like that's going, what they're going to do when they step in, how it's going to work out, a senior, missing a year of development, things like that. But uh, he, every time he's at practice, 
You know, he's had to miss a little bit for baseball in June and things like that. He's always been uh, keyed in, doing things the right way, going hard, making some big catches. He had a couple big blocks today, too. It's not like he's filling out a big frame, uh, but he's quick and elusive, and we like how he's presenting the problem on the edge. So, I want to give the, the, the guys an opportunity to talk. Uh, if they would, just uh, same question for all three of you. What are you looking most forward to this season, and what strength do you bring uh, to, your, to this football team? This year, um, I'd have to say that I'm looking most forward just to be playing my senior year with the guys I've like been playing with since junior high and uh, with the new like mindset that Coach Morgan has brought into uh, our field house and everything. We've grown close together, and I'm looking forward to just the big things that we can do on offense and on defense. Cody, while you have the mic, just keep the mic and ask you a question. The transition from quarterback to running running back, how's all that worked out for you? Uh, it's worked out great because I wasn't really a natural quarterback. I've always played running back my whole life, and so the transition is pretty easy for me as I'm more built for running back than I was for quarterback, I guess you'd say. And so it's just been an easy process in learning the offense. Just keep passing the mic down because my heart's for the offensive line. So <laughs> talk to us about the takeoff end of line and your personal goals and expectations for the football season. Well, uh, I feel like our offensive line is um, at its peak right now, the best it's been. And um, my goals is just to put everyone on their back and get them down the field. You like Smash Mouth football. Are you uh, kind of partial to the running game or path pro? What is your forte? Um, I like the running game. It's <laughs> You, you get a little more aggressive. Are you politicking with it. a little bit for that? <laughs> yeah, you can get a little more aggressive with the running game with the with the guys up front, and it's a lot more fun. What, well, coach? What would be y'all's run pass percentage? Or you alluded to that a little bit, but yeah, um, it, we really don't put a number on it. You know, we want quarterbacks have some freedom in what we do. So a lot of it depends on the box and the leverage and where people are at. So if it's if it's a pass, it's a pass. If we, if we throw it 70% or if we run it 70%, we want to put a little bit of that on Storm. Um, we were kind of handcuffed a little bit with his development last year because he was young and never done it before. But so far, uh, he's been able to make a defense pay no matter how they're lined up. And that's, that's kind of the goal for our offense right now. And you mentioned camps this summer. You feel very confident with him calling that mm -hmm. at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, with, with – Choices that we have built in, whether it be run game or quick game and things like that, um, he's handling that, that part pretty well. Mentally, decisions are usually right up about 90, 95% right now. And um, we're extremely pleased with that part. Um, we just have some of the sporadic inconsistencies you're going to have with a, a developing quarterback in the summertime. Um, but I, I know his teammates, everybody's excited for how he's been performing so far. Coach, this is the last question I have, but uh, how, how important is it for you guys, uh, uh, more so just in regard to that rivalry, but to get that Bell Trophy back at the end of the season? It stung a little bit. Um, I think we all agree it came, we came out flat. Um, coach Slos is a great coach over there. I got a ton of respect for him, so it's kind of hard for me to have a rivalry with him. Um, but at the same time, you want to beat everybody. And, um, you know, I, I think we'll perform better, we'll do better. Uh, and that's kind of the goal every game, but especially that game, you know, especially with it, it being the crosstown rival, same town, all, the, all those things, uh, being able to have pride and, and uh, won that game for the entire year. So we're, we're hoping to get that back this year. Feel pass the mic over. Talk about the battle in the trenches. Uh, we talked about run versus pass, both with coaches and offensive linemen. What is your perception uh, of run versus pass? How do you feel about uh, the season's headed into both aspects of running the ball and passing the ball. What are you most comfortable with? Um, really, either one right now. I think we uh, we shored up some of our uh, our pass our pass blocking schemes on when they're blitzing. Uh, we went over that last week real well. I think they picked it up pretty good. But for us, I mean, I'm an old lineman at heart. We want to run the ball. Uh, we want to run wedge. It's our favorite favorite play. It's a we're just trying to basically kill everybody in our way is our way of putting it. Um, I, I can't be more happy with where they're going right now. 
they are picking up the mental game of it. Second year in offense, I think we're putting a little bit more on their plate as far as letting them call checks at the line a little bit more and putting them in a better situation. And uh, right now, I think they're – we've got some things to fix, don't get me wrong. We're, we're still learning and still moving in the right direction. But for right now, I, I can't be more pleased with where they're going. Now, you're offensive and defensive line, correct? Yes, sir. How many do you share with yourself? <laughs> uh, so How many you have going both ways? Nobody. We've got uh, we got five offensive linemen, and uh, we got four defensive linemen that they don't touch either side of the wall right now. Um, last year we had two guys that went both ways quite a bit, and uh, you could tell towards the end of the game, you know, it, it's rough to be in the trenches oh, yeah. both sides. So uh, we're lucky enough right now that we got the numbers, and we feel pretty confident in the five that we have on the offensive line and the four that we have on defensive line. So barring injuries and barring anything happening, we're going to end up being able to platoon the whole time. Now, you lift multiple offensive alignment or whatever. Does that include a tight end? Do you have a tight end in the game? Old school tight end with their hand on the ground next uh, to the tackle. Yeah, we're not, we don't have an old school tight end. Um, our, we lost our two offensive tackles and one of our guards. Um, they're they're going to be key losses, but we've got guys that they've worked really hard. Uh, Sapp will be a two-year starter. Uh, we have another one, Austin General, that'll be a two-year starter. Started a couple games as a sophomore. Uh, Andy Head, who was uh, started three games, ended up breaking a bone in his leg, so he had, he was out the rest of the year. So we have some experience coming back. It's just uh, making sure that we can gel together and keep trucking. So I'm glad you're here, Coach, because uh, Paragol was here earlier, and they think they have the best O-line in the conference. So would you like to comment on that? I'll. Uh, We'll wait till week ten. I'll put that. We'll wait. We'll wait till week ten. I feel like I'm a. Uh, you can, you can ask my O line. Sometimes they think I'm kind of an aggressive guy in practice, and we get kind of uh, physical and get going. And so we'll just wait till week ten and see how it goes. Did that game need any more heat, guys? <laughs> Coach, if you don't mind, just uh, give a closing statement. Um, again, thank you guys for having us. So. Uh, for us, we want to build off of kind of where we were progressing to last year. Uh, I know we only won two games, uh, but I think the biggest thing that we accomplished was the change in culture. Uh, that was the biggest fight, and uh, guys are taking hold of that. And our locker room was always solid every week, no matter what, uh, even when the chips got down a little bit and the wheels fell off after week two. We're hoping. And we're going to practice and we're going to work hard and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen this year. But uh, uh, looking forward to Westside at ASU and hope everybody can come out and watch some GCT football.